Rub up your engines! All right, today I got a Dodge truck that's acting weird. You slow down, it can stall out. It's a 2004, but it's one of the good trucks that they make because it's the old style Hemi engine, not the one that has problem with the cams wearing and clattering. Yeah, it's a Hemi, but it's older. And as you can see, it was made in the United States, made in the USA, and check it out, Daimler Chrysler. Here's the odd thing, you know, Mercedes Benz bought Chrysler. They thought they were going to make a bunch of money and sell Mercedes to Chrysler dealers and all kinds of stuff. Well, they ended up losing a whole bunch of money and they pawned it off to a guy who later sold it to Fiat, who later went into Stellantis. But when Daimler owned the company, they were actually improving the vehicles. These trucks from this year, 2004, they're pretty well-made trucks most of the time. Now, for instance, this has a five-speed automatic transmission that's pretty reliable. It doesn't have one of those crazy eight, nine, or ten speeds that are always hunting for gears. This thing's got over 100,000 miles. Tranny's still working fine. The engine doesn't burn any oil. And if you want an interesting fact, the automatic transmission is the only one in its class at the time that had the same gear ratio for low towing forwards and in reverse. So you can actually back up with heavy loads on this. A lot of vehicles, it's harder to back up because the reverse gear isn't set for pulling heavy weights. This one was. But when the Germans owned Chrysler, they were actually improving. For a while, Chrysler had been going downhill. Why do you think they got bought by Daimler? The company wasn't doing too good, right? And the Germans, actually, the quality was coming up. But they gave up, they lost too much money. So if you find one of these older ones, lower mileage like this, or just a little over 100, can be a really good vehicle. This will conk up once in a while. First, we'll check under the hood and see if anything's obvious. Now, he bought the shoes, so who knows what anybody's modified on the stuff before he had it. Still got the stock air filter housing here. They haven't changed that. That's a good thing. Guys put cold air filters on, and those things often will screw up. There's nothing that looks odd, nothing that's come off, so we'll start it up. Starts right up. We'll listen, see if we can hear any vacuum leaks. Don't seem to be any. Now, somebody told them it might be an air filter. It had one of those oiled K&N, so he took it out, put a regular one in, but it didn't make any difference, so let's get some data out. Well, it's an easy one to plug in. Here we go. And we notice the check engine lights on, so there'll be some codes. Go to diagnostics. Oh, it's looking things up. We'll kind of look around. A lot of space. Plenty of room in these things. Seats are held up. Okay, you know, a little wrinkly on the leather, but hey, they've held up pretty good. Side up gauge with a kind of silver gray back and so it's real easy to see him here in daylight old school it's got a six disc changer on it cds no tape deck though it's not that old and while it's doing its thing you can see you can mess with four wheel low four wheel high or just plain old two wheel drive as this is a four wheel drive vehicle and i'll go through the diagnosis with an auto scan here we go oh it's scanning that Look a little bit more somebody put a steering wheel cover on because the original steering wheel is kind of worn out well, people drive trucks pretty hard. And while we're waiting, you can see it's got a totally massive drink holder. Longest armrest for people with gigantic arms. A few problems, ECM, body control module. So we'll flip through. Nothing on the bottom end, it's all on the top end. So we'll start with the ECM. The EGR position sensor is high, and the EVAP system has small leaks. So we're going to go for a road test later. We're turn the key off and back on and we'll erase these codes and we'll check out the bcm code that's a code for the radio not being programmed right well he doesn't care about that the radio works we're worried about why the car's stalling out it has nothing to do with that we got rid of those codes but you'll notice even though we erased it the ecm still has a code so we're gonna look at that again what code popped back up even though we erased them that is the egr position sensor is high meaning the egr has failed and that makes total sense because if the egr valve is open like it says it's high that will add too much egr when you don't want it and when you come to a stop it'll make it stumble they're electronics you just got to replace them when they go bad needless to say you can't fix them it's not bad we got an aftermarket one for 50 bucks what happens is the little pin will get stuck open it's all computerized runs with electric solenoids when they break you throw them away and put another one on too big 
I don't know why I'll get that out of the way. I like how the radiators made crooked so I could fix the AC conductor. That's kind of a squirrely design. Oh, here we have. We're going to take the side off. And luckily for us, it's moving pretty fast. Now you got to move the red clip in here, and then when you squeeze it, you take the connector off. We're almost there. Now we're taking the two bottom bolts, and when you get down to one, of course, the whole thing comes to the side, and you can see it better. Off comes the old one. And if you look closely, you can see it's stuck open. See how that one's pushed down in? This is the new one. See how you see all the copper up? This one is how it's supposed to be. It's presently closed. This one is just stuck up in the open position, so it's always sucking EGR gas, which you don't want. It's a trick. You'll see, you don't want the gasket falling off, so they're actually made you can start the screws, then the gasket won't fall off when you put it back on. And as you can see, we got these bottom bolts started. We got it all bolted on now, and we will snap the connector on, and it goes, and that's locks. There, now it's all locked. And we will put radiator overflow back in its place. And wouldn't you know it, it's not that size either. You think they could standardize something, you know? So we'll go back inside, start her up, and we gotta reset it again. Race codes, yes. Race everything. And now you can see the check engine light is indeed off. Now if you fix the problem like we just did, the light will go off by itself if you drive it a while, but it's just as well to reset it. Then you can know right away, maybe there's some other problems. Sometimes it stops analyzing your car when it sees that problem, you fix that problem. Then the light later comes back on with a different code. That can happen because they'll stop analyzing when they reach a certain level when they see one trouble code. They can often go further and they get a new trouble code. That's why you always want to remember your trouble codes. Write them down or have them on a computer like this. You take a picture with your phone, whatever. So you'll know, here's what I had. And if you have a new one, that's why you have a new one. Because now it can analyze further. Oh, here we go. It's running perfectly fine. Like I say, it's only got 105,000 miles on it. Here we go on our little drag strip in the sky. Let's see what this thing does. We step on the gas and it takes off. <laughs> like I say, this older style Hemi, they don't get the noise of the new ones. They were actually a better design. Yeah, they got a little bit less horsepower, but let's face facts. Do you need more horsepower than this? Not really. <laughs> it's no longer conking out the check. Engine light isn't on, so pretty easy fix. An oldie but a goodie. We fixed it with a very simple fix. That's why the scan tools are necessary these days, and you do not have to go to the dealer to buy their overpriced stuff. There's stores that sell all these things. That was 50 bucks. Simple fix, right? And you also learn that when Mercedes-Benz was involved, and it was Daimler Chrysler, they were actually starting to build them better. It was a shame that the Germans didn't want to lose any more money than they were losing in the first place buying it thinking oh after a few years it'll get better well it didn't get any better they kept losing money they didn't sell little mercedes or chrysler dealers and they just gave up with all things fiat took over and guess what it's been downhill since then but back in 2004 hey they were headed towards great things so if you find a used one like this with a hundred thousand you might want to snap it up and here's some bonus questions and answers. Cisco One says, dealer wants 13 grand for a new engine in my 2016 Lexus. Got 60,000 miles. I went to the dealer in Florida. After a month, they said I need to replace the entire engine because we removed the crankshaft balancer and found the keyway is damaged. It looks like it was loose at some point and it damaged it. Now it's running fine for me, but uh, what do you think? Of course, they're going by technicalities. If your crankshaft keyway is damaged, yeah, the crank can move back and forth, right? And the only way to fix it, from far as they're concerned, would be to replace the crankshaft, which means tearing the entire engine apart and rebuilding it, which would cost a fortune. And they really don't even do that at dealerships anymore. They just say, we'll put another engine in. And if you ask them what kind of engine they're putting in, they're probably talking about putting a used engine in it, right? My advice would be go to a good machine shop that knows their stuff. And when they take that crank off, if they say the end is a little bit damaged where the keyway is, they can weld stuff on there quite well to keep the keyway from moving so the crankshaft pulley will not fall off. I've had people do that for ages. I've even had people put the keyway in using something called JB Weld. That's just a tube X epoxy. They put it on the keyway so it won't move anymore. Then they slide it on and then years later they're still working. 
that's a fix that sometimes will work. Of course, welding it on would certainly keep it on forever. But even something like JB Weld, I would try that first rather than put another edge. If it runs fine and everything, at some point in time, somebody probably worked on the car. Maybe they put an oil seal on, they didn't put it on tight, and then the crankshaft pulley started wobbling, it'll make the keyway a little bit odd. But like I say, you could try JB Weld, you could get a good welder to just weld that keyway in so it doesn't come off and it would stay on. I would not replace an engine because of that. There's always ways to work around that. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.